So, uh, what is logistics? I know what the very first answer is. Never heard of statistics before, ever, in your life. Study probability? Study of probability. Mm. Well, I guess that's the answer we're looking for. Probability is something that we use in statistics, but we just don't, you know, study about probability. For that, probability theory. And of course. Um, analyzing trends. Great. Trends in what? Could be anything. Could be anything. In so, a in a set of data. Oh, which is what we call a sample. And I'm going to extend that to something else um, in a second, which is which will lead us to the terminology of. Um, Example and population. So we want to uh, analyze trends in a set of data, and we want to infer something from the data. So I'll just call it inference. You know, when I say inference, that is going to include looking at trends, making predictions, finding inputs, everything. But pretty much, we're going to make use of data to make inputs. So what I'm going to draw now is just a conceptual um, way to look at statistics. Um, towns you will just encounter time and time again. From time. It's not an amoeba. So the biggest set, the outer set, which contains the inner one, is what we call the population. The set that we choose from the population is the sample. I hope you wrote exactly the way you're um, looking at both, because I'm going to draw something in. Um, so, first, it was analyzing trends in a set of data, and I say collectively inference. Inference would include prediction, analyzing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I came to this conceptual model where I said, you know, the biggest set is the population and the one within it is the sample. Why do we draw it this way? Well, population could be any large set of interest. For instance, for instance, I could say a country. We want to learn something about the country. Any, which is pretty large in the of the country. Now, even a state. If you want to learn about the state of Florida, if you want to know accurately, you have to analyze the entire state of Florida. Do you agree? Okay. And it could be any large attribute, uh, let's say um, the genome, which is huge. And we want to study about something that's so large. Um, and get information from it. So there's also a large set. If I can't get a good picture of the entire country, what would I do? A portion of the country, right? So that is this portion. Does that make sense? So it could be anywhere in the country, but I'm taking a part of that country, and that would be the sum. So sample simply is a subset of 
total population. Population is a larger set, sample is the subset of population. Let's see if you can give me some examples of population. Something uh, it's a large set, very difficult to measure or analyze. So the only way we can get information from it is by taking a sample. Space. Space. It's fast. And we want to know, well, the type of gases that are in space. Well, I can't go and look at the entire space. It's not feasible. But maybe I take portions of it here and there and analyze and say, OK, there's plenty of nitrogen or what, what. Anything else? The ocean. The ocean, very good. The ocean. What else? Bacteria. How about uh, our universe? Would be great that it is a population. Do we? Um, not that folks. That folk. Uh, we're taking notes. Yeah. Oh. Um, that's fine. University. Anytime you analyze something, you say student population. Do you not? We looked at the student population and found out everyone likes Starbucks. Or not everyone. A good percentage of you like Starbucks. Correct. So that is also a population. It's a bigger set. We can't analyze the entire bigger set. So we go and look at a portion. The sample part is easy um, to understand. If I picked 20 people at random, and I said, well, who's wearing pink today? Am I right? That's two people? What? No. Uh, let's see. Who ate burgers over the weekend? No one likes burgers. OK. Who ate pizza over the weekend? That'll make a good sample. Do you like Starbucks? Yes. OK, one. Do you like Starbucks? Yes. Two. Do you like Starbucks? No. no. OK. <gasps> Good. Who else? <laughs> You're saving money. <laughs> well, here, I saw another hand go up. Me too. Oh. Do you like Starbucks? I'd rather have Dunkin', but yes. Okay. Uh, my okay. Who else? <laughs> no. no? Okay. Oh, I do like Starbucks too. Okay, so six people, three of them said no, three of them said yes. So, approximately, what percent of uh, the university like Starbucks. Three percent, uh, three of them light out of six. One half, which is fifty percent. So that I collected or inferred based on this tiny little sample. The reason why I asked, you know, pink shirt or who had pizza or burgers, because I wanted to make the sample as random as possible. Because I don't know, I'm not going and asking uh, with some uh, inherent bias. I just want to make it as random as possible, which is why I asked, you know, for a pizza and then I collected a sample observation from it. Does that make sense? Okay. If we had a population, I could ask a thousand questions about population. Do you agree? Okay, um, let's just say I will throw in extra words, but uh, which one should we pick? Bacteria. Bacteria. Okay, now what do we want to understand about bacteria? Where is it located? Where it's located, okay. 
Um, let's even make it more specific. Let's just um, say he's trans. Okay. So, what do we want to know about uh, Strathclyde? Very good. He went not wrong. Is it yet? Okay. Now, the population or the bigger entity of interest is the infection caused by strep bacteria. That's the biggest set. So, There is no way that I could go and record and observe every single person who has had strep infection in the past. Do you agree? Is it feasible? No, it's, no, I can't go and find it all. So I got to randomly pick a sample. Um, so, say, 20 times if you call, whatnot. Let's say I went to B Health and got a sample. What is the uh, measurement of interest in the population? What is the number that we are interested in about the population? Number of people that die. The number of people that die, specifically speaking, the percent of people that die, they are related. So I'm going to. So that is what I'm interested in, that is the numer numerical quantity of interest in the population, and that is what we call the parameter. And it is the unknown value, we don't know what that is. So we went and collected a sample. And based on the sample, let's say I found a number, and that percent happened to be, I'm making this up, 5.72 percent. Good. So that 5.72 percent, let's say I got that by looking at 1,200 infections. Randomly selected 1,200 people. Who had strep infection, what percent died? 5.72%. That seems a lot, um, but that's okay. This is not true. Go, go look at the actual value. But the point is, this number was calculated from that sample. Do you agree? Yes, or no? yes. because I said I used 1200 observations to get that. So that Is the statistic. Statistic is a numerical measurement that you compute using the sum. Does that make sense? One may ask, well then, how are these two connected? Well, the statistic is merely An estimate for the parameter. I'm not calling it the exact value corresponding to that. I'm calling it as an estimate. Well, 
why should it be an estimate? Because I can't take the whole population. The only way I could get to the truth is if I looked at the entire population. The only way I could say um, nitrogen is present everywhere in the space at higher quantities is if I could observe the entire space, which is just not feasible. So whatever number that I'm getting is merely an estimate. Does that make sense? Okay.